Hi, good morning. This is Cynthia Mock with Rosie Shack, and we're going over our breakout on data flow diagrams. What we're going to do today is break up data flow diagrams into their symbols and show you one that's totally put together so that you can do them in your own projects. What they do is show you the overlook of the flow of information in a system, and it can help you analyze or do analysis of a system to make sure that the design is correct. This is one of the first things you do to understand what pieces need to go there. ER diagrams are gonna influence your tables and this influences what data stores you do and where you put your systems. Okay. Okay, let's see. Introduction to data flow diagrams. The definition of a data flow diagram. A data flow diagram is a graphical representation that depicts the flow of data within a system. It outlines how input data is processed and output data results through various processes. Making complex systems is easier to understand. It gives you the big picture of the system. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna see that this is showing you a big outbreak. It's like the top um, look at of a transcript system where a student enrolls in the transcript system and then they check their grades. There's an input and an output. There's a data store. There is a system and um, another entity, which is the instructor. See how it sends grades to the instructor and the instructor gets its roster? or instructor sends the roster. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk a little more about it. The importance of data flow diagrams. DFTs are essential in the systems analysis as they aid in identifying system requirements and managing complexity. By visualizing data flows, stakeholders can pinpoint efficiencies and streamline processes for better performance. DFDs are a key tool for systems analysis. The key components of data flow diagrams. Data flow diagrams consist of four primary components. Processes, that was um, what we said was a transcript system. Data stores, that was off to the side. External entities and data flows. Each component serves as a unique role in representing how data is handled enabling effective communication among stakeholders. So all of those four entities, you can represent them in UML. We're gonna go over UML in our diagrams with this. UML is Unified Modeling Language. Um, but let's continue to go on. I'm gonna show you each of these symbols in a breakout. Okay, elements of data flow diagram. Here's where you're going to see the illustrations I did myself to show you an example of the symbols for your data flow diagrams. Processes. The transcript system is processes. Processes represent the actions or transformations that data undergoes within a system. They can be illustrated using circles or rounded rectangles, showcasing where inputs are converted to outputs. This is the UML way of doing it with a square, with a rectangle, with a rounded corner, where you put what the system is. Data stores, or where it stores the information. Data stores signify repositories that hold data within a system. They can be depicted with an open-ended rectangles indicating where data is stored for the retrieval and processes at a later stage. You see this transcript, this, um. I need to use the mouse. You see this transcript uh, trying rectangle? It's missing one of the lines on the end. You do a rectangle and then you don't put a line on one side of the end. Interesting. Okay. External entities are just a rectangle. External entities represent sources or destinations of data outside the system. Illustrated by squares or rectangles, they highlight interactions between the system and external components, such as users or other systems. If you can look at this one, you can see that it just has a rectangle. Oh, just a rectangle with a little drop shadow. 
Data flows are these arrows where you show the data flow. Um, data flows indicate the movement of data between processes, data stores, and external entities. Represented by arrows, these flows illustrate how information is transmitted throughout the system, emphasizing communication paths. So these arrows are the data flows, making it a data flow datagram. You show it between what makes the system, what makes the store, what makes the entity, and where the information goes. UML. UML is what we used in these diagrams I made. The overview of UML, unified modeling language is standardized modeling language used in software engineering to visualize the design of a system. It is widely accepted notation that helps teams communicate complex systems and designs and engages stakeholders in the development of processes effectively. UML symbols relevant to data flow diagrams. Key UML symbols include rectangles for processes, open-ended rectangles for data stores, and arrows for data flow. We just saw these in the breakdown of the DFDs. These symbols simply rep simplify the representation of data movements while ensuring clarity and comprehension across the team. Hmm. Differences between UML and other notations. UML offers a more standardized approach compared to other notations such as data flow notation or entity relationship diagrams. Its versatility allows for a comprehension modeling of various aspects of software development, making it suitable for complex systems. So there's more than one way to do it. Okay. Let's talk about creating data flow diagrams using it's a step-by-step -step process. Begin by identifying the system's boundaries and external entities. Next, outline the major processes, showing inputs and outputs clearly. Use UML notation for each component, ensuring to connect the process with the data flows for comprehensive understanding. The process is very important because the process is what transforms the data. So you're gonna see what's transforming the data and where the data goes and where it comes back. The data store is what keeps it. And your database is really related to the data store and the system. The best practices. Ensure clarity by limiting the number of processes to avoid complexity. Consistently use UML symbols and maintain clear labeling for data flows and entities to enhance comprehension. Validate with stakeholders to confirm accuracy and relevance. Make sure that it matches the interviews for the real flow of the system. When you did your interviews and did your sketches, you're gonna take that and define these processes and define these flows to make sure that the right information goes to the right area. That's something where this is interconnected to your ER diagrams, which will be a breakout in about two weeks because the next breakout I'm going to do is feasibility because you asked for more. And those pieces together help you to construct your system. Common mistakes to avoid. Avoid overloading diagrams with excessive details or processes that confuse stakeholders. Ensure that all data flows are two-way if applicable. And don't ignore the importance of including external entities to provide full context to the processes. Hmm. Okay, tools for creating data flow diagrams. Software such as Lucidchart, Microsoft Visio, and Draw.io offer user-friendly interfaces for creating UML diagrams. These tools provide pre-built shapes and templates for quick diagramming, ensuring adherence to standards in UML. And I have to tell you, these are great programs. And to do the diagrams for this thing, I used Illustrator because I have a graphic design degree and I have a legal legal license for Adobe. So, you know, there's more than one tool for you to use. You might find that because of patenting, the UML might not be perfect in some commercial use. All right, well, that was our breakout in data flow diagrams. Um, I made this show with Prezi. Prezi, there's a link in the doobly-doo where he is my partner of AI and we're getting along and doing this. 
Um, I have a tip jar down below if you want to leave me any tips, like a $5 super thanks, that would be great. And thank you. Rosie Shad, thanks you for finishing our presentation. Have a great day.